Proverbs chapter 30. The words of Agar the son of Jakey, even the prophecy. The man spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Eucal. Surely I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. I neither learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father, and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, Give, give! There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things say not, it is enough. The grave, and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, four which I know not. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth, and wipeth her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness. For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he reigneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married, and a handmaid that is heir to her mistress. There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. The ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make they their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet go they forth, all of them, by bands. The spider taketh hold with her hands, and is in king's palaces. There be three things which go well, yea, four are comely in going. A lion, which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any. A greyhound, and he goat also and a king against whom there is no rising up. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood, so the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Section 4, Proverbs chapters 30 to 31, The Prophecy Proverbs. The final two chapters of the book of Proverbs are prophecies that pertain to the nation of Israel. Just as the Holy Bible culminates with the great book of prophecy, the book of Revelation, 
the Proverbs end with prophecies that will continue to instruct the nation of Israel into the future. Prophecies are not applicable to the church, the body of Christ, living in this present dispensation of the grace of God which was given to Paul for the Gentiles. Opening Sentence Proverbs 30 verses 1-2 to The words of Aga the son of Jacob, even the prophecy, the men spake unto Ithiel, even unto Ithiel and Eucal, surely, I am more brutish than any man, and have not the understanding of a man. The prophecy, the final section of the book of Proverbs, including chapters 30 and 31, are prophecies as clearly stated in their opening sentences. Prophecy is what has been spoken and written by God concerning the nation of Israel. The names mentioned in the opening sentence are only found in this chapter, with the exception of Ithiel. Ithiel is listed in a record of genealogy found in the book of Nehemiah. He is from the tribe of Benjamin. The books of Nehemiah and Ezra were written during the time when the captives of Israel were returning to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall and the temple which had been destroyed by the Babylonians in 586 BC. Soon after the completion of this humble temple, God stopped speaking to the nation. Therefore, the timing of this prophecy of Proverbs May 30th be understood as a final encouragement for the believing remnant of Israel to hold fast to the written word of God. Agus spoke this prophecy to two men. This is consistent with a principle laid out in scripture that every word must be established by two or three witnesses, Deuteronomy 17 verse 6. 1915 Matthew 18 verse 16 But if he will not hear thee then take with thee one or two more that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established Aga whose name means collector or gatherer might have been gathering proverbs to canonize or judging by the context of this chapter he might have been gathering together with the remnant of true believers in Israel Aga claimed with certainty to be an ignorant human being but he was speaking a prophecy that contained the wisdom of God. He wanted to emphasize that the words he spoke were not the words of a man but of God. Ignorant and unlearned. Proverbs 30 verse 3 I neither learned wisdom, nor have the knowledge of the holy. In Proverbs 9 verse 10, wisdom instructed the children of Israel that, the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Psalms 131 fits the description of a man like Aga, or rather a child like Aga. It is possible that Aga's ignorance may be due to the fact that he is a young child. Regardless, Agu is informing the reader of his one ignorance while pointing the reader towards the perfect word of God. Similarly, Jesus' disciples, who were also ignorant and unlearned men, Acts 4 verse 13, were often referred to as little children, Matthew 18 verse 3, John 13 verse 33, 1 John 2 verse 1. 318. The Son of God, Proverbs 30 verse 4 Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? The prophet Aga may be brutish, but it is clear that he trusts in God. The answer to each of Aga's questions is, Mun cannot do this, but God can. The answer to the question, what is his name, is I am Exodus 3 verse 14. However, Israel would not learn the name of God's Son for yet another 400 years when the promised Messiah would come in the flesh to visit his nation. The previous verses clearly point the reader to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Deuteronomy 30 verses 11 to 14 For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea, that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it, and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee, in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. The word of God. Proverbs 30 verses 5 to 6 Every word of God is pure, he is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Aga is holding forth the knowledge, wisdom and understanding of the word of God alone. It is a shame that men do not take heed to the warnings in scripture against tampering with God's word by adding to, diminishing from, and wresting the scriptures out of their context and dispensation. Having God's pure word is the most important issue of all time, but especially for the nation of Israel when they will face great tribulation in their last day's prophecy. Finding the theme, the sufficiency of the word, Proverbs 30 verses 7 to 9 Two things have I required of thee, deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me, lest I be full, and deny thee, and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor, and steal, and take the name of my God in vain. The importance of having the true word of God instead of vanity and lies, and food convenient for me, will be manifested during the great tribulation. Israel will have to choose between, 1. 
taking the mark of the beast so that they can buy and sell food, Revelation 13 verse 17, which is the equivalent of worshipping vanity and lies, and 2, fleeing into the wilderness where God will feed them manna from heaven, Revelation 12 verse 6. This is why Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Give us this day our daily bread, as he prepared them for the coming tribulation, Matthew 6 verse 11. Cursed accuser, Proverbs 30 verse 10 accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. This warning has an implied subject of you, because it is directed to God's Son, the nation of Israel, Exodus 4 verse 22. After 400 years of God's silence to his nation, he spoke to them by sending John the Baptist. John warned individuals in the nation against making false accusations, Luke 3 verses 10 to 14. Peter, when writing to the Jews that had been scattered due to persecution, encouraged the believing remnant to behave in such a way as to make ashamed those who would falsely accuse them of evil doing. 1 Peter 3 verse 16. These warnings are best understood in the context of Israel's coming tribulation. Cursed generation. Proverbs 30 verses 11 to 14. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation, whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. Aga prophesies about an unbelieving generation in Israel, that will be used by Satan during the tribulation to persecute, and accuse the believing remnant. This wicked and perverse generation will deliver their own brethren to death, just as prophesied in the Old and New Testaments, Micah 7 verse 6, Matthew 10 verse 21. They refuse to obey the law of God taught to them by their mother and father, Proverbs 1 verse 8, and they refuse to be washed by John's baptism, Luke 7 verse 30. Like mother, like daughter, Proverbs 30 verses 15 to 16 The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, Give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, for things say not, it is enough, the grave, and the barren womb the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. In verse 8, Aga asked God to give him food convenient for him, which is to say, to give him just enough to satisfy, or in other words to give him his daily bread, Exodus 16 verses 16 to 18. Aga did not want God to give him more than he needed. In contrast, the horse leech, which is a large, bloodthirsty leech, is never satisfied. The horse leech represents the land of Israel, who had two very insatiable daughters, the cities of Jerusalem and Samaria, which are described in great detail in Ezekiel chapter 16 and 23. They were dissatisfied with God's blessings and chose to worship the gods of the surrounding nations in order to obtain riches. Ezekiel 16 verse 28 Thou hast played the whore also with the Assyrians, because thou wast unsatiable, yeah, thou hast played the harlot with them, and yet couldst not be satisfied. Ezekiel 16 verse 40 For behold, everyone that useth Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, as is the mother, so is her daughter. The grave, the barren womb, the parched earth, and fire can never be satisfied. As Proverbs 27 verse 20 previously instructed, hell and destruction are never full, so, the eyes of men are never satisfied. Judgment of the great whore. Proverbs 30 verse 17 The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. A final battle at the end of the tribulation period culminates with the dead bodies of the enemies of the believing remnant of Israel, and God, being devoured by ravenous birds, Revelation 19 verse 17. The Wonderful Way, Proverbs 30 verses 18 to 19, There be three things which are too wonderful for me, yea, for which I know not, the way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and the way of a man with a maid. Sometimes God's knowledge is too wonderful for men to comprehend. Job 42 verse 3, Psalm 139 verse 6. Aga prophesied of certain ways which he could not understand. How is it possible for an eagle to navigate through the air, or a serpent upon a rock, or a ship in the sea? Aga's ignorance of the way of a man with a maid indicated that he was a virgin. This directs the reader to the book of Revelation, and the 144,000 virgins sealed by God, Revelation 14 verse 4. The Wicked Way, Proverbs 30 verse 20 Such is the way of an adulterous woman, she eateth, and wipeth her mouth, and saith, I have done no wickedness. The adulterous woman is unbelieving Israel who committed fornication, idolatry, and worship of false gods. This adulterous woman is unrepentant and unashamed of her ways. Numbers 25 colon 2 And they called the people unto the sacrifices of their gods, 
and the people did eat, and bowed down to their gods. Jeremiah 6 verse 15, Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush therefore, they shall fall among them that fall at the time that I visit them they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Unrest. Proverbs 30 verses 21 to 23 For three things the earth is disquieted, and for four which it cannot bear. For a servant when he regneth, and a fool when he is filled with meat. For an odious woman when she is married, and an handmaid that is heir to her mistress. These verses describe conditions during the tribulation. A servant, known as the Antichrist, will rule over Israel and all the world, the foolish unbelievers will take the mark of the beast to be filled with meat, the nation of Israel will make a covenant, or marry, the Antichrist and worship him, the handmaid, like Hagar representing the self-righteous Jews, Galatians 4 verses 24 to 26, will temporarily triumph over her mistress, Sarah, representing the believing remnant of Israel, weak yet wise, Proverbs 30 verses 24 to 28 there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise, the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer, the conies are but a feeble folk yet make they their houses in the rocks, the locusts have no king yet go they forth all of them by bands, the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. These weak and insignificant creatures represent the believing remnant of Israel, who possesses the word of God during the tribulation. Their trust in the word of God is their only refuge, Psalm 119. The believers will suffer through the tribulation in different locations. Some are in the city of Jerusalem, and of those, some are inside the temple, Ezekiel 8 colon 16 dash 9 colon 7. Other believers are located within the bounds of the land of Israel, Matthew 10 verse 23, Revelation 12 verse 6, while some are scattered throughout the nations, Jeremiah 29 verse 14. Just as God helped Noah, Daniel and Job through tribulations in different ways, God will help the believing remnant. Noah was saved from tribulation, Daniel was helped by God while in captivity in a foreign land, and God allowed Job to suffer through tribulation, but he restored him in the end, Job 42 verse 10. The faith of these men will be a comfort to the believing remnant of Israel during their suffering. Good to go. Proverbs 30 verses 29 to 31 There be three things which go well, yeah, for a comely in going, a lion which is strongest among beasts, and turneth not away for any, a greyhound, and he goat also, and a king, against whom there is no rising up. To go well is defined in context as turn away. A lion, a greyhound, a male goat and a king all pursue their prey at all costs, and with unwavering determination. Nothing will stop them. As it pertains to Israel's tribulation, the Antichrist will pursue the believing remnant with similar determination in an effort to utterly destroy them. He will not turn away from his pursuit until God intervenes and destroys him, Revelation 12 verses 13 to 17. Revelation 20 verse 10. Guard thy mouth. Proverbs 30 verse 32. If thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, or if thou hast thought evil, lay thine hand upon thy mouth. The believing remnant might be tempted to react against their persecutors and avenge themselves during this time of tribulation, but they have been instructed to fully rely on God to give them the words to speak to their enemies, Matthew 10 verses 16 to 23. Mark 13 verses 9 to 13. Otherwise, they need to follow Jesus' example of keeping silence before their accusers, Isaiah 53 verse 7, Acts 8 verse 32. They also need to be aware of false brethren among them during this time, Matthew 7 verse 15, 24 verse 11, 2 Peter 2 verse 1, Micah 7 verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that leath in thy bosom. Proverbs 13 verse 3 He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Conclusion, certain destruction. Proverbs 30 verse 33 Surely the churning of milk bringeth forth butter, and the wringing of the nose bringeth forth blood, so, the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. The word surely indicates the assurance of the coming tribulation. Many in Israel will deny the warnings of the prophets, and many false prophets will proclaim a false peace, when the tribulation is upon them, Jeremiah 6 verse 14, Ezekiel 13 verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. However, the word of God is sure, and those who believe and trust it will be kept safe during the wrath that God will unleash upon the nation of Israel and the world. Jeremiah 6 verse 14, They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Ezekiel 13 verse 16 to wit, the prophets of Israel which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, 
and they shall not escape. Summary, Proverbs chapter 30 is a prophecy that applies to the nation of Israel, particularly foretelling of the coming tribulation in the form of Proverbs. Holding fast to the word of God will be their only hope for enduring to the end of this terrible time of judgment. Dispensational consideration, because this chapter is a prophecy, it only concerns the nation of Israel. The doctrine being taught here cannot be applied to the lives of Christians living in the present dispensation of grace. To attempt to do so will only bring confusion to the believer. Life application, the most important and unchanging principle taught in this chapter, is that every word of God is pure. No one should add to his words because God will reprove him, and he will be found a liar. The Apostle Paul instructs those who are in the church today to learn contentment in their present circumstances, and to be thankful for having food and clothing. Those who happen to be rich are instructed to willingly give to provide for the ministry of the word of God. Philippians 4 verse 11 Not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. 1 Timothy 6 verse 8 And having food and raiment let us be there with content. 1 Timothy 6 verses 17 to 18 Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Not every passage of the Bible is addressed to the same audience. All the Bible should be learned, Romans 15 verse 4, but confusion will reign when scripture is applied to the wrong audience. The word of truth must be rightly divided, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. The church of this present dispensation of the grace of God, which is the body of Christ, Ephesians 1 verses 22 to 23, Colossians 1 verses 18 and 24, will not face the wrath of God that is coming upon the nation of Israel and the world. The body of Christ was a mystery first revealed to the Apostle Paul. The Lord suddenly appeared to him on the road to Damascus, Acts 9 verse 3, in an event that was not prophesied, and the body will disappear just as suddenly in an event called the rapture, an event also not found in prophecy. The body of Christ will be caught up to be with the Lord forever, 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 to 18. This is a great comfort to those who believe it. Proverbs 31 verse 1 The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Proverbs 31 is another prophecy taught to a king by his mother. Proverbs chapter 30 Homework Prophecy versus Mystery Prophecy concerns the nation of Israel. It does not concern the body of Christ, the church of this present dispensation of grace, which the Apostle Paul called a mystery. It is called a mystery because it cannot be found in prophecy. See Romans 16 verse 25 1 Corinthians 2 colon 7, 9 17, Ephesians 3 verses 2 to 9 and Colossians 1 verses 25 to 26. Romans 16 verse 25 Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 7 But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 17 For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward, but if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. Ephesians 3 verses 2 to 9 If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you ward, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, and of the same body, and partakers of his promise, in Christ by the gospel, whereof I was made a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 verses 25 to 26 Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Names in the Bible When a name only occurs once in scripture, it can be helpful to use a Hebrew dictionary to discover the meaning of the name. Often, the meaning of a Bible name is defined for us within the verse in which is used. Here are some examples. Genesis 3 verse 20 And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Eve means life or living. Genesis 5 verse 29 And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands, 
because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. Noah means rest. Genesis 16 verse 11 And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son, and shalt call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. Ishmael means God hears. This is just a sampling of many such verses in the Bible. I recommend the free online resource made available by Abraham Publications, which can be found at this link www.abarim-publications.com slash dictionary slash index.html. This is a tool that should be used with caution, as the Hebrew language was lost and mingled when the people were scattered into other nations. The Hebrew people have attempted to rediscover their language and put it back into common use since 1948, but it is not without error. We should always put our faith in the Bible alone, which God promised to preserve forever. Men err but the Bible does not. However, knowing the meaning of a name may shed light on the context of a passage. Use this online tool to find the meaning of the names mentioned in Proverbs 30 verse 1. Aga, Jekah, Ithiel and Yukal. Cross-reference, there is only one other man named Ithiel, who is found in Nehemiah 11 verse 7. He is of the tribe of Benjamin and returned to dwell in Jerusalem after the 70-year captivity. It is possible that this prophecy was spoken to him, and preserved in the canon of scripture for future generations. Dispensational consideration, when Proverbs 30 was written, no human had ascended up to heaven, nor descended. But in our current dispensation, one man claims to have done so, and that is the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians 12 verses 1 to 7. 2 Corinthians 12 verses 1 to 7 It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, whether in the body, or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise, and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth, but now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to befay me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Add thou not unto his words, it is a shame that men do not take heed to the warnings in scripture against removing words, adding words and resting the scripture out of context. This is what Satan and Eve did in the garden, and this is what all modern translations have done. It is important to understand that there are two streams of original Greek manuscripts. One is the genuine and one is a counterfeit with multiple errors. The genuine was defended by the martyrs, while the other was in the hands of bloodthirsty murderers. All modern versions use the counterfeit stream of manuscripts. This information is not difficult to find if you are interested. Having God's pure word is the most important issue in the world. Deuteronomy for verse 2 Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. 2 Peter 3 verse 16 As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Daily bread, Jesus taught Israel to pray, give us this day our daily bread, as he prepared them to go through the great tribulation. This has no application to our lives today. The Apostle Paul instructs Christians to work, so that we may eat, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10, Ephesians 4 verse 28, 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10 For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Ephesians 4 verse 28 Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing, which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Concordance search, the unbelieving generation of the nation of Israel is described with such words as, vipers, wicked, serpents, sinful, faithless, perverse, untoward, evil and adulterous. Search a concordance for these keywords, coupled with the word generation, to study the generation referred to in Proverbs 30. Contrast these results by also searching for chosen generation, which refers to the believing remnant of Israel. The ravens of the valley, consider the following references to the culmination of the great tribulation, Matthew 24 verse 28, Luke 17 verse 37, Ezekiel 39 verse 4, Revelation 16 verse 16, and 1917. Study, if you have time you may like to search for an eagle, 
a serpent and a ship, or ships, in your King James Bible. You will find these associated with prophesy pertaining to Israel. Read, at the time of the writing of Jeremiah chapter 50, that scripture was a past occurrence, a present fulfillment, and a future prophecy of God's judgment against the daughter of Babylon. Verse 42, the fulfillment of this prophecy also occurs in the book of Revelation against the mother of Babylon, Revelation 17 verse 5. In verse 34 the land is disquieted, and in verse 46 the whole earth is moved. Read Jeremiah 50, then cross-reference with terms also found in the book of Revelation.